Thank you, Laura. Let's open up with praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you. We just learned of a passing of a beautiful woman who was an educator of educators. But Lord God, we get to stand and to praise you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What a blessing it is to come into the house of God and to lift up his holy name. We don't take nothing for granted, God. We don't take health for granted, God. We don't take a stable mind for granted, Lord. We don't take our children for granted, our grandchildren for granted. We don't take having occupation for granted, a career, money. Father God, we don't take any of that for granted, Lord God. We don't, Lord. We don't take it for granted, Lord, that we can come into the house and get a word that's uplifting and encouraging. We thank you, Lord God. In such a time where truth is not truth, people are twisting it and making it their own. We can come and hear truth, Lord God. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord God. For a man of God who brings it, Father God, who you use day in and day out, Father God, to bless your people, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can keep praising them if you need to or be seated. You know we ain't going to be long. (laughs) We ain't going to be long. We ain't going to be long. But I thank God because it's an honor to be entrusted. I thank God that my vessel is clean. That I didn't have to hurry up and make up with my husband because I didn't say something jacked up. That I can stand with a clear conscience and a clear mind. So I thank you, Lord. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Before we get started, though, I, I do want to touch on a beautiful soul who we lost, who was Kara Riggs. Yes. And she was definitely an educator of educators. Yes. Yes. You know, she gave people a chance, opened up doors of opportunity. She was a lover of kids. She was passionate about those who were underserved. And so if we can just take a moment and pray for her family, her daughter. Because we will all get a turn. And I know I don't have that void of losing someone that close to me like a parent. And prayerfully, it won't be any time soon. But Lord God, we come before you on behalf of Kara Riggs' family. Lord God, she was a beautiful soul who touched the lives of many. Our community will be mourning her loss, Lord God. Yes. Touch her family right now. Be the God of comfort. Yes, Lord. Because only you know how to comfort their hearts. Because you lost a son. You gave your only begotten son. Yes. So you know that feeling, Lord yes. God. Yes. Yes. Lord God, be with them right now. Her daughter in the name of Jesus. Shelby. Comfort that soul. Shelby. Shelby. Yeah. Shelby. Surround her family with your angels. Give them the strength to continue in her legacy, which was that of helping people, encouraging, and loving. Father God, we thank you for Kara Riggs' life, what she meant to our community, what she meant to our church. She was a member here. And we ask that your spirit just be there with that family right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. On the other hand, we got our man of God celebrating his anniversary. Yes, you are. 47 years. Woo, 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 woo. Woo. 
That's amazing. Yes, it is. So, I got the text today. He was like, part two. Part two of what you were talking about. I was like, okay. So, going back into trauma. Beautiful. And... I'm hoping I don't end up being all over the place because my mind was just racing. You start, you're like, okay, what did he tell Let me refresh what he talked about and let me get into my notes. Okay, Lord, touch my mind, feed my mind, feed my mind. (laughs) Even in the office, feed my mind, feed my mind. But the man of God was talking about Jeremiah. And Jeremiah's life goes hand in hand with trauma. You're like, well, how? It's because Jeremiah was chosen to deliver a word to people and it wasn't an easy word to swallow. Right. And so when he delivered that word, here came the persecution. Jeremiah did not ask. He did not ask to be in the position that he was in. He was called. And so in that role, God knew that for him to perform the job he had for him, Jeremiah was going to endure some trauma. So we're going to start with Jeremiah Jeremiah 29 and 1, where the man of God was, where he, yeah, where he was Sunday. To give some backstory on Jeremiah uh, 29, Jeremiah wrote a letter. He was writing a letter to the, the, um, the people of Judah. So they had been delivered out of bondage. And basically, uh, let me look at my notes. Uh, I need some money. I just had a brain fart. Uh, the guy who built the pyramid, uh, who was building the tower, Babylon, Babel. they were delivered from yeah. the hands of the Babylonians right. because they had taken them captive. And so they were now free, but they were free to go and to inhabit a new land, right? So Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 29 was writing a letter to them. So think about bondage. When something is taking you bonded or taking hold of you, your mind is impacted. That is trauma. Mm -hmm. In that bondage, I dare say women might have been raped. There might have been abuse. Families torn apart. Men killed. Because when you're taking someone or a people in bondage, You torture them to break their will. Because I don't want you to feel like you can rise up against me. So this was the letter that Jeremiah wrote to the people of Judah. Did you start reading? You want me to start at number one? Um, Jeremiah 29, we're going to start at verse 4. I'm sorry. Thus said the Lord of hosts the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build your houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons And give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives. And pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. 
We're going to end. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop right there before we go any further, and I'm going to take it back. So here it was. He was writing this letter to people who were captive. And he didn't say, go feel sorry for yourself. He didn't say, do the best you can. He said, get up and live. Right. Get up and inhabit the land. Go, be fruitful and multiply. Have children and inhabit the land. And it's difficult when you endure trauma to have hope. Yeah. And so even though the word of God, you know, he's given the letter, go do this, go do that. Go. I can only imagine the people in their mind. I got to go to a new land. And there's some trauma there because I'm afraid. What if the Babylonians come back? Right. Do I have to be on guard? And yeah. God is saying, I want you to go to this land and I want you to be fruitful, have children, multiply. I want you to be blessed in this land. What happens when we endure trauma or those things that hurt us, sometimes it is hard to move. Yeah. One of the things is called fight, flight, or freeze for people who deal with high, heightened states of trauma. Freezing is one of the ways that we, our bodies respond and our minds respond to traumatic events. And so these people, they had a choice. They had a choice. Well, I don't want to go. It's a new land. What if these people do the same thing? What if, what if we can't build? What if the land is not plentiful? What if, what if, what if, what if? Mm -hmm. And Jeremiah is like, no. Go. Go. Yeah. And inhabit this new land. Go and take on this new opportunity. Yes. Go and come against come on. that fear that hinders you from taking a step forward. And I'm talking to myself because I took a step and it did not turn out the way that I thought it was going to turn out. Uh -huh. And so it cut my income in half. <laughs> wow. But now I'm trying to get this thing started. I'm like, Lord... I did something and I know I didn't do my part. Part of it was because I froze. I was scared to go out there and inhabit this new territory and bring my gifts to this new territory. Mm -hmm. I froze. What if they don't like me? What if they don't receive me? What if, what if I'm not equipped to do this, Lord? What if my proposal is not right? What if, what if, what if? Mm -hmm. And here it is that God doesn't care about the what ifs. He cares about the movement. All right. That's right. And so I started thinking, what is causing me to be so fearful? And it goes back to addressing how I felt about me. And I feel like we have dreams and goals and things that we want to do and pursue and to pursue with gusto. And we get stopped with the what ifs. We get frozen, paralyzed. We are frozen. And some of that lack of movement comes from what we went through and how those events shaped our minds. All right. And I'm like, Lord, but I can't keep being defined by these issues, by these traumas. And we have all dealt with some type of trauma Come on now. in our lives. Yes. We all. Yep. Abandonment. People underestimate being abandoned by a parent. So my biological father was never in my life. Matter of fact, my, dad, my mom was going to shoot him one day. Because she was like, you ain't going to keep playing with my child. So I was older and I began to have a relationship with one of my biological sisters. And I was picking up her son to spend some time with them. And my biological father was at the house because her son was there. And I looked at him and I said, do you know who I am? And he said, you're supposed to be my daughter. What? 
And I was like, oh. So I grabbed my nephew and I went to a park and I cried. And I cried and I cried and I could not stop crying. Because this man who had never been there, you going to reject me again? And my mother was like, and I called my mom. I was like, mom, I went to go see him. And she was like, Michelle, why would you do that? You're going to make me shoot him. I'm like, no, nah, don't do that. But it was traumatic for me because this man would make promises when I was younger. And I would be looking for him and he would never show up. And then one time I tried to go visit him with our son, Dante. He was seven years old and he was drunk. And in front of my son and my husband, I was trying to like hold, he was trying to give him a hug. And when he held me, it was like how, how a husband would grab his wife that he was attracted to. It was, and I was like, man. But yet and still with all of that, a part of me wanted some acceptance from this man. I wanted him to say, yes, I'm your father. And yes, I should have been there. And I'm like, but why am I searching for that? Why do I need that? But I didn't realize that not having the validation of this man was traumatic because then I started looking for the validation of others of men who did not care about me. They just wanted to take something from me. Right. And then leave me with scars. Leave me feeling like less than. But I want you to validate me because the man who should have validated me didn't. That's traumatic. And I didn't understand it. And I was constantly looking, affirm me, affirm me, affirm me, affirm me. And even in this, this, this move of faith, I'm like, I need to be affirmed. You know, Lord, I don't know. I don't know. And he just says, move. I said, move, go out there, multiply in the program, get the kids, impact the kids, impact the jet up Cedar. Move, Michelle, move. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Lord. But it's hard. Because I have paralysis. Because I want someone to validate who I am. And God says, no. I know your end from the beginning. I know every hair on your head. You are validated through me. When I filled you with the Holy Ghost, I validated you. Come on, come on. Come on, yes, sir. Yes. And so... My encouragement this evening is not just for myself, but to anyone. There is something that you are reaching for. And I just don't know where to start. If it's a young man with a business, you can start a business at 16. Get with somebody in here. But don't be paralyzed by the what ifs. Or I can't. Or I don't have the steps. I don't know what to do. Since I'm struggling with this, I had to call my sister, Simona. Y'all, I got to do a sidebar. Everybody got to have a hype man. (laughs) Who got a hype man? You got that friend you can call. She be like, go girl. Dude, you got this. Do this, dude. (laughs) Chris, you got a hype man? Emma, you got a hype woman? (laughs) I'm going to hype you up this evening. You all that, girly. You is all that. (laughs) You're beautiful, you're yes. bright, yes. you're creative, you're yes. talented. Yes. You are all that. That's right. I'm your hype man. Go, Emma. Go, Emma. Yes. <laughs> but everybody should have a hype man. All right now. And Simona is my hype man. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can call Simona and she'd be like, girl, do it. You can do it, girl. You better do that. Hey, friend. I'll be like, hey, friend. Girl, you got this. You got this. But what if I don't feel like I got it, girl? Girl. Girl, you know how women, we can say girl, girl, and we just said a thousand things that you men don't even know. We just changed the tone. Girl, 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 girl. And we didn't have a whole conversation. That's right. And y'all don't even know. (laughs) 
So I needed help with this. And I'm like, since my sis, she didn't done this before. Sis, I need you. Help me. Help me get this thing together because I, I'd be darned if I'm going to stay paralyzed and keep looking for someone to say, do it. Or you can do it. You can write the book. I go to Barnes and Barnes and Nobles. There's this painting on the wall and it says author. There's a book on there and the author's name is Betty Smith. That's the wow. author's name. And every time I see that, I think of you. See, what we do is we get with people who have done what we're trying to do. Tamika has wrote a book. Right. Let's get with Tamika. Tamika, I need to write a book. Yep. Help me break this thing down into chapters. If I need to write one chapter a week, if I need to write one chapter a month in a year, I'll have 12 chapters. Come on. Whatever it is that you desire to do, we got to pursue and we cannot let this mind here. And we have all, we have all been through situations and circumstances that have been scarring. But we can't let this here hinder you from taking a step forward. That's why I'm like, Lord, let this mind, which is also in Christ, be in me. Lord, you, you are not the God of fear. And this is me talking to myself, y'all. Right, right, right. You know, I, I ain't trying to pump nobody up, to be honest with you. You get what you get. You don't throw a fit. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to get out of here quick. <laughs> but pursue. Pursue. Address what is going on up here that is stopping me from pursuing. We got to take inventory of those hurts. We got to take inventory and start addressing them because they will stop you. They will stop you from living your best life, from reading your, reaching your greatest potential. And I'm talking to myself People have ideas in here that are amazing. And then we have ideas and then those ideas fall by the wayside. We don't always pursue. But Jeremiah, even in the traumatic experiences of being called by God to bring a word to people right. and then being persecuted and not just one time, not just two times, not just three times. It was over and over and over and over again. You cannot tell me that that does not have an effect on your psyche. You can't tell me being our man of God and being persecuted, called out. You cannot tell me that sitting at this pulpit doesn't come cause. Come on, come on. Yes, it does. Yep. You cannot tell me that. Being a pastor, I was just talking to uh, Lana in the office, and I said, I cannot imagine the weight of a man of God. A true man of God, not someone who's looking to increase their, their name, but a, a true man of God who is available, who talks to you, who encourages you, right. who comes here and brings the word. Then he's probably answering text messages, answering calls. And this person's in crises and this person is here. And that's just not us. That's okay. I got a church over here. I got people from the outside who are still trying to reach me right. because this has happened and this has popped off. And maybe, maybe God has put him in a place that he's the only one because God has mantled him right. that can address this situation. Come on. That is traumatic, but I thank God. I thank God that we have a man of God who seeks God, who addresses the mind so that this job does not kill him. And I'm like, I don't have half of what our man of God is going through. None. But I need to pursue. You pursue a dealership. Later on in his life where he should be in retirement, yep. he did not let paralysis stop him. What if I can't? No, he pursued. He went. 
whatever it is. Lachelle, I took the test. Yes, I did. I took it seven times because I was pursuing my designation to sell some real estate. And now she is selling real estate. Woo! And not just a little, y'all. It's a lot. And we all know that. Brian pursued. I'm going to leave Wally World. Right. And I'm going to step into B&B Realty. He pursued Lucretia. I'm going to give up some income come and I'm going to come here yes. and I am going to be the light, yes. the hope, the yes. foundation. Yes. I'm going to be the mama that these kids never had because I am pursuing God's divine will for my life. Her husband, the leader, the man of God with the vision, and I'm getting behind because if God says pursue, She's following him as he follows Christ. Pursuing. Pursuing past trauma. And here's the thing. Nobody endured trauma like Christ. Nobody. When I thought about that, just sitting on my couch, I said, you know what, God, it is true. When he says that you are touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Yes. You know those things that we went through yes, that have Lord. scarred us. Yes. There are some things that have happened to me that I'm like, Lord, if you don't heal. But Jesus said, I am touched by the feeling of your infirmities. Yes, Lord. None of us endured a cross. Nobody endured being torn, your skin ripped to shreds, your bones showing, having a crown of thorns like nails in your head, bleeding. As we're learning in Pastor KT said, when he said, Lord, take this cup for me, because he knew what was coming for him. Nobody endured trauma like that. Yes, Lord. He knew what was coming, and yet he said, nevertheless, whose will be done? Nevertheless. Thy will be done. So God, thy will be done in our lives. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thy will be done in Chris's life yes. and in your life. Yes. Awesome young men. Yes, they are. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. And even though he endured the trauma, it was for us. All right. It yes. was for us. Yes, it was. Thank you, God. Now, he said greater things that we're going to do. Now, Lord, I don't want to do that. But whatever cross you have for me to bear, whatever cross that you have for me to bear, I need you to help me because my hurts, they stop me from walking into my destiny. Sometimes I can't move. Sometimes I sit and I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm not doing it. I got big dreams and big plans, but my movement is not as big as my dreams. And I'm tired, God. I want to be a Caleb. In the Bible, that he saw the giants because he was a spy. They sent him to spy out some land. And he came back and his report was, hey, that fruit in that land is all that. There were giants in the land, though. <laughs> were there not giants in the land? Yes, it was. He didn't come back and report, Lana, there's giants in the land. I don't think we can inhabit that land. Come on. Now. Lana, there are giants in phlebotomy. Right. Lana, there are giants in being a nurse. There's a giant in being a nurse practitioner and having your own facility. There are giants. But yet God still said, pursue, go for it, pursue, even if you're pursuing, it's pursuing healing. Sometimes we need help with getting some things straight. Pursue whatever it is that is burning in your heart. And you're like, I know I'm supposed to be doing this. I know I am. I know that I have the passion and the call for this. You got to pursue it. And it doesn't matter how old you are. 
you got women, men graduating from college with PhDs and they're 90 years old. I'm like, okay, Michelle, you can, right. you can finish this program. Get your yeah. life right. Get your life right. <laughs> but pursue. So I'm asking God, Lord, help me. Help me to have your mind. Help me to have the eyes of Caleb. That when I see giants coming against me, that I'm not cowering down. And sometimes that giant is not external. Sometimes that giant is right up in here. Right, exactly. Come on now. This one right here. Okay. This giant. Because everything before us looks greater than what's on the other side. My circumstances, my situation, my money problems, my marriage, my this, my kids, my that, my health, my what, whatever it is, it's a giant. And even in that, Jeremiah did not consider all of that with the people. He didn't. He didn't say, you know what, before you go off into the land, we're going to get you some counseling and some therapy. And I want you to go here. And I want you to stay for a minute, though, because we got to get you ready to inhabit the land. No, he said, go. Go into this foreign land. How many of y'all have something burning inside of you and it's foreign, but you want to go and infiltrate? All right. Oh, nobody? Okay, I'm going to raise my hand. I know I do. I know I do. Chris, you got to infiltrate the IT world. You want to know why? Because we got hackers out there. We need you to come up against the hackers for our businesses. I need you to find them people. Don't be draining my account. <laughs> so, right. yes, you do have something you are pursuing. Woo. All right. Come on now. Everybody's All hands right, should be raised. There is something. We have not reached the mountaintop. Yes. Yes. We ain't reached no mountaintop. I ain't there. B&B Realty has to be a multi-billion dollar company. Come on, come on. Come on. I am pers there is something that is burning. And I, I'm like, Lord, don't let the flame go out. But let me every day kill the paralysis. Amen. Let me go up against this. With trauma, it's fight, flight, freeze. And there's a new one called fawn. Flight is when you run. That was me my entire life. If anything was hard, I was running. I had my shoes on and I was out of here. And I got into the habit of running when it was opposition against me. And most of the time that opposition was me. When I started teaching, the opposition was <laughs> I had people around me. They didn't say it. But they looked at me as beneath them. I would come. I would bring information about students. I used to have teachers be like, this child needs to be on medication. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't, don't get this twisted. Because I'm not against medication at all. I didn't been around some kids that did not, were not on medication. And when I tell you they go from, they go from Chucky to... Who's a good kid <laughs> to, <laughs> to a good kid? I'm not against that. But I used to have teachers that would want me to push this, push parents to do things that they weren't comfortable with. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. And I had a teacher and I would, me and her would be on the same email thread and I would be emailing the parents. Oh, so-and-so he grew in this today. He's doing that. He's doing this. And she's like, well, you're making it seem like everything is okay. I said, look, I'm a parent and I don't want no teacher emailing me every day. What my child is doing wrong. Right. I said, they want to know how my child is growing. And I said, just because you think they need to take you, you think they need to take their child to the doctor and put them on meds and do that doesn't mean that's what they want to do. You got to respect the wishes of that's that parent, right. educate right. that child yeah. and let them know how they're growing. Come on. I know but I was still considered by the people around me like, nah, because my organizational skills were challenged. I was always late with stuff, trying to get stuff in. And it wasn't because it was purposeful. I just had a hard time with organizing. And so when I got into teaching, it would start, quit, start, quit, start, quit. 
because going back to my dad, I wanted someone in my field to affirm me. Oh, Michelle, you're such a great teacher. You're so awesome. No, I didn't get no warm fuzzies. I had one time, I had a teaching job and I was like, Lord, I can't do this. I can't manage my emotions. I can't help these kids. I'm surrounded, Lord. Maybe this ain't what I'm supposed to be doing. So I quit. But then I was like, oh, but I need to make money, so let me sub. <laughs> and I went into this school. And at this point, when this event happened, I should have known. I went into a school and was just subbing. And if anyone, well, the only person who's seen me is Star Young. Star Young has seen me in my element. Who I am with y'all is who I am with kids. This, this is me. And I have fun with my kids. I love my kids. They know my temperament. They know everything. And so I went into this school and I was just subbing, having fun with the kids. We were learning. And teachers started taking note of me. And I'm just a sub. And went to the principal. The principal came to me and was like, look, I didn't heard about you. I want to move this other person out and I want to move you in. And I was like, but I don't want to teach like that. He was like, I just need you to think about it. <laughs> that was God yeah. affirming me. Yeah. But I didn't realize it. Come on now. So he did exactly what he said. He moved that teacher who had been there for years out of the building and then put me in her position. And then you know what God did to me? He took the principal and moved him to Howard Kennedy. Wow. I said, but Jesus, that's the only person who think I'm worth anything in <laughs> teaching. <laughs> and when I got into teaching, the principal, she was someone who had an opinion of me. So here it was. I'm surrounded. I'm feeling inadequate. They had a person in the building who was their go-to, and what she said was it. And I'm just like, I would sit in the meetings, and people would throw me under buses. They would belittle me and make me feel like I was this big. And I'm like, Lord, I should not be teaching. I'm not cut out for this. I start, I quit. My emotions are all over the place. This is not me, Lord. So then I stopped. I left. I'm like, I'm just going to sub again. Lo and behold, I'm like, oh, this seven thing, I probably need a job. I need some benefits. <laughs> I had applied, and it was crazy. Nobody would hire me except a Catholic school. And when I got into the school, my life changed as an educator. And the reason it changed is because God was showing me, you have place. And I began to work closely with the principal, the counselors, everything. I was in a leadership position without a title. And I was able to make decisions that impacted the lives of children, that impacted our school. And the principal was cool. He'd be like, oh, Michelle, you can do it. Just, you know, well, if you think it's good, just do it. Just do it. And at that moment, when I'm like, but they trust me, my self-esteem started raising. I'm like, okay, Lord, maybe I am cut out for this teaching. And that's when I really began to walk in my calling as a teacher. But I, y'all, I was paralyzed, always feeling not good enough. Sometimes that feeling comes from trauma from your parents. Yeah. A parent might have kept putting you down, telling you all that you're not. So then when you get into adulthood, you are seeking that validation from whoever is willing to give it. Your job, a person, relationship, whoever. But I'm here to tell you today that you are good enough. Yes. Whatever it is that you desire to do, go for it. Whatever it is. If it's a transportation company, go for it. If it's, I want to draw paintings and sell them online, go for it. If it was, I want to start my own center addressing the diverse needs of kids, go for it. If it's, I want to address the self-esteem of women and help them feel good about themselves, go for it. Whatever it is, go for it.
Because I'm going to go for it. It's going to be hard. But I refuse to let what has scarred me all my life stop me from living yes. my best life in Christ. I will go kicking and screaming and crying. You might see me on the floor snotting. You might see tears in my eyes. I may be fronting, crying, laughing and hee 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 and then going in my car, breaking down. But I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to go for it with all that is in me. With all that is in me. Because God gets the glory when you pursue. The glory is not for man. God gets the glory. And if he be lifted up, what is he going to do? He's going to draw some more people. Why? Because you have pursued. You have infiltrated the land. You are going to get people. You are snatching lives and you are pursuing. Someone is standing by you being healed because you pursued. There are children who need the both of you. God sent them out two by two. They need you, both of you. Somebody going to seek out, I dare say, a star mess around and get with Lisa Mills and be like, I need you to dress me. I need you to be my stylist. She's going to be like, baby, we're going to put some clothes on you, but we also got to address this here. We need Christ to dress this. Pursue. Pursue the food truck, Lana. Shoot, I, I, I'm an I'm a eater, so you know I'm going to be there. I'm going to be eating. Pursue. That is the word for today. Do not let traumas, those things that hurt, those things that nobody knows about, stop you from moving forward. Don't let it paralyze you. Let me take a minute. Let me make this personal. Michelle, don't let the fact that you've always felt like a defeated learner stop you from earning the doctorate. I got a pursuit. Yep, I stopped. Whatever it is, if it's grades, pursue. Don't let anything hold you back. Because those things that we deal with, they're going to be there. And we're going to be fighting some things till we are in the grave. But don't let those hurts and those issues stop you from pursuing your best life in all areas, spiritually, emotionally, physically, every area of life. If you have health issues, get them checked out. How do I become more healthy? Pursue, pursue good health. Pursue mental stability. If there's a relationship that is broken, someone close to you, mend it. Pursue. In all areas. This is our best life. We get one life, and the more that I hear about people dying, and I'm like, Lord... Teach me to number my days and apply wisdom unto them. Teach me to number my days and not live so haphazardly that I'm just throwing away time like I've got it. Because I don't got it like that. Teach me, God. Show me how to take the time that I have. And use it for healing in all manners of my life to use it to pursue that seed that you have already planted in me. Because remember, if there's something burning in your heart, God gave you that idea. Now, if it's sin, I can't help you. God didn't give you that. But if it's in your heart and it gives him glory and honor, that thought didn't just come from you. It came from him. Right? Amen. And if you know it came from him, the man of God talked about a God idea. Right. Yeah. Then go for it. Amen. 
in all manners of your life. Go for it, young men. All manners. The word of God ain't just for us adults. Matter of fact, if you take the word of God, because it's not going to return unto him void. Void meaning that God's going to get a return off of, of what he says. You take it and you pursue whatever it is. But that means in my pursuit, I got to do what I need to do in school, right? And when you're in school, you need to be a banner for Christ. What does that mean being ba a banner for Christ? I need to watch my words. I need to watch how I treat young ladies. I need to watch basically what's coming out my mouth and my actions. And I need to avoid having a double life. If you do that and I put money on it, God will elevate you in front of your peers. Yeah. And they will look at you and be like, man, how'd you get there, brother? I just pursued a better way of living. That's, right. That's what you want. That's right. You want people to look at you and be like, man, what's different about you? And you're like, hey, first and foremost, you know, I'm about my, my God's business. I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to do the right thing. I ain't got time for all this stuff over here. I ain't got time for some girl who think I'm cute. Now she want to have my baby. I ain't got time for that. And you're going to have those feelings. Yep. Brothers, are they going to have those feelings? Yep. Come on now. Y'all, don't leave me hanging. Brothers, are they going to have those feelings? Where they going to want to, she fine. I'm around her. I'm getting a rise. You're going to have those feelings, but you got to fight those things because there's a greater purpose for you. There's a greater purpose for you. There's a greater purpose for you. Chris, I don't know how long you're going to be with us. God might decide, you know what? I want you to go do IT in Amsterdam. Better learn some German. But pursue whatever it is in my clothes, because y'all know I don't go beyond the time. I ain't got nothing left. Take some time. Evaluate. Lord, what are those things, those traumas that I've been dealing with and fighting and they're stopping me from moving forward. We're going to go before God in prayer. If you want to come to the altar, come to the altar. You ain't got to come just because I said that, but spend some time with God. Lay it before his feet, whatever it is. Pastor KT, would you pray, please? Precious Lord, Father and Savior in heaven. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. For we know we all have had trauma. We all have had trouble. We all have had tribulation. But the woman of God who has fought it herself with her relationship with God taught us that we need to pursue despite trauma. Well, if you said it, guess what? That's what we're going to do, and that's what she's going to do. So we speak your purpose in us, and we speak that doctrine in her in the being. We believe it and receive it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.